Hey there, everyone. It's Kenny, and I'm back with another video. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to apologize for the delay in uploading new content. Things have been crazy busy at work lately, as my company currently developing a new program for exchange trips to mainland China. But don't worry, I'm still here and ready to talk about all things history. Speaking of which, I've been getting a request from you asking me to talk about the Liu Dynasty. So, today I want to share my thoughts on the Liu Dynasty, and why I think the Northern Song Dynasty should never have gone to war with them. So, get ready and let's go. Let's talk about the Liu Dynasty, or as they called themselves, the Kitten Empire. The Liu Dynasty, or Kitten Empire, was a powerful dynasty in China that existed from 907 to 1125. One of the most significant events in the history of the Liu Dynasty was the signing of the Chan Yuan Treaty in 1005. This treaty was signed between the Liu Dynasty and the Northern Song Dynasty of China, and it marked the end of a series of battles with the Song Dynasty. The Kitten people were originally from the area that is now modern-day East Asia, but they eventually migrated south and established a powerful empire in China that lasted for over two centuries. Now, the interesting thing about the Liu Dynasty is that they were heavily influenced by Chinese culture. In fact, they were so influenced that they eventually became a part of the wider Chinese ethnic group. This was due in part to the fact that they ruled over a large area of territory that included much of what is now northern China. They also had a policy of accepting and incorporating Chinese culture and customs into their own. Over time, the Liu dynasty became more and more integrated with Chinese culture. They adopted Chinese language, customs, and even religion. They also began to see themselves as part of the larger Chinese civilization and referred to themselves as part of the North-South dynasties along with the Song dynasty. This integration was so complete that even the Mongols, who would later conquer China, referred to the Liu as Chinese. Other countries even used the term Kidai to refer to all of China. This term was eventually adopted by other groups. The name was then introduced to medieval Europe via Islamic and Russian sources and became Cathay. So, while the Liu dynasty may have initially been seen as a foreign power ruling over China, over time they became an inseparable part of Chinese history and culture. When it came to fighting the Liu dynasty, the Song dynasty just couldn't seem to get the upper hand. One of the main reasons for this was the lack of quality horses available to the Song army. You see, in ancient warfare, horses were a crucial element in battle. They allowed for quick movement, flanking maneuvers, and even charges that could break enemy lines. And the Liu dynasty had plenty of them. In fact, their military system mandated that every soldier be equipped with three horses. That's right, three horses for every soldier. This gave the Liu army a huge advantage in terms of mobility and strategic options. On the other hand, the Song dynasty had a hard time getting their hands on good horses. This was due to a combination of factors, including scarcity of resources and poor breeding programs. As a result, the Song army was severely limited in their ability to mount successful attacks against the Liu. They simply couldn't keep up with the speed and maneuverability of the Liu cavalry. But it wasn't just the horse issue that made the Liu dynasty a tough nut to crack. The Liu were also a much more organized and centralized state than the nomadic tribes that the Song had previously faced. Under the leadership of the emperor of the Liu dynasty, the Liu had established a strong, centralized government that was capable of mobilizing resources and projecting power across their vast territory. This made the Liu a much more formidable foe than the Song had ever encountered before. Even the Great Han and Tang dynasties of the past would have had a hard time conquering the Liu. So, instead of engaging in a prolonged and costly war, the Song and Liu eventually decided to negotiate a peace treaty based on the realities of the situation. Do you know that the Northern Song Dynasty's military campaigns against the Liu Dynasty were economically disadvantageous? The cost of war was high for the Song Dynasty, and the benefits were uncertain. This economic disadvantage made the Song Dynasty reluctant to engage in military campaigns and instead preferred to engage in trade and commerce to generate wealth. 
In contrast, the Liu dynasty had a backwards political system and struggled to balance their budget. The Liu dynasty relied on warfare to maintain their economic stability and constantly sought war to gain the wealth they desperately needed. For the Liu dynasty, warfare meant either winning and gaining valuable resources or losing and solving their food crisis through a reduction in population. It was a no-lose scenario for them. However, for the Northern Sung, the cost of war was high and the benefits were uncertain. They would either have to spend vast amounts of money on military campaigns or suffer the consequences of defeat and pay heavy reparations. The Sung Dynasty was well aware of their economic disadvantages in war and preferred to engage in trade and commerce. They had advanced technologies and superior systems in place that allowed them to generate vast amounts of wealth through trade and commerce. For example, the Sung Dynasty paid only a small portion of their tax revenue for the annual tribute to the Liu Dynasty, which was easily affordable. However, they spent exorbitant amounts of money on military campaigns, which could not be sustained in the long run. Even the Emperor of the Sung Dynasty recognized this issue and was reluctant to engage in warfare. He knew that the government's income was primarily used to support the military, with 80% of the revenue going towards military expenses. He preferred to pay the Liu Dynasty tributes to maintain peace and engage in commerce rather than engage in costly and uncertain military campaigns. Once upon a time, in the late Northern Sung Dynasty, the Jurchen tribe rose to power and began attacking the Liu Dynasty, causing them to lose large amounts of territory. At first, the Northern Sung did not participate in the conflict, as they had maintained a friendly relationship with Liu. However, they later joined forces with the Jin Dynasty and succeeded in defeating the Liu Dynasty. The Northern Sung had long dreamed of reclaiming the 16 prefectures of Yan and Yuan, which they had lost to the kitten led Liu Dynasty more than a century prior. However, attempts by previous emperors had failed miserably, and the dream had become nothing more than a pipe dream. Emperor Fai Zhang, who was in power at the time, was eager to achieve this dream and decided to ally with the Jin Dynasty. However, his lack of military knowledge and poor decision-making skills led to a series of disastrous defeats. The Sung army was ill-prepared, and their defense capabilities were severely lacking. Coupled with the corruption of their military leadership, the Sung army was unable to achieve victory. Moreover, Emperor Fai Fai Zhang's desire to achieve this dream led him to overlook the fact that the people of the 16 prefectures had long been integrated into the local population and did not necessarily share the same sentiment towards the Sung. As a result, the Sung army faced not only formidable enemies, but also hostile civilians. Despite these setbacks, the Northern Sung continued to push forward, and eventually, they succeeded in defeating the Liu Dynasty with Jin Dynasty. However, in the process, they had also exposed their military capabilities to the Jin Dynasty, who capitalized on this opportunity and launched a surprise attack, capturing both Emperor Fai Zhang and Emperor Qin Zhang. This event, known as the Jing Kong Incident, marked the downfall of the Northern Sung Dynasty, which had once been the most powerful empire in East Asia. The Jing Kong Incident led to a massive invasion of the Sung Dynasty by the Jin Dynasty, resulting in the fall of the Northern Sung Dynasty and the rise of the Southern Sung Dynasty. However, the Southern Sung Dynasty's rule was restricted to a small area south of the Qin Ling Mountains and the Kwa River, which was only two-thirds the size of the Northern Sung Dynasty. The Southern Sung Dynasty was forced to retreat to the southeast, losing the traditional agricultural areas in the Yellow River Basin. As a result, the tax revenue from agricultural lands was greatly reduced. Now, I am going to talk about a hotly debated topic, whether the Sung Dynasty should have allied with the Jin Dynasty to attack the Liu Dynasty. Some argue that international relations should be based on self-interest rather than honor. The Liu Dynasty was in decline, and the Jin Dynasty was on the rise. It was clear that the Jin Dynasty was going to be the dominant power in the region, so the Sung Dynasty should have teamed up with them to defeat the Liu Dynasty. Plus, working with the Jin Dynasty could have helped the Sung Dynasty recapture lost territory. But here's the thing. If the Sung Dynasty hadn't allied with the Jin Dynasty, the Jin Dynasty would not have attacked them. The Jin Dynasty's main reason for attacking the Sung Dynasty was that they saw how weak the Sung Dynasty was during their attack on the Liu Dynasty. The Sung Dynasty couldn't even defeat the weakened Liu Dynasty, which made the Jin Dynasty realize how vulnerable the Sung Dynasty was. It was this realization that ultimately led to the Jin Dynasty's ambitions to conquer the Sung Dynasty. So, while it's understandable that some might argue the Sung Dynasty should have allied, 
with the Jin Dynasty for their own self-interest, it's worth considering the unintended consequences of such a move. The Sun Dynasty's military weakness was exposed during the attack on the Liu Dynasty, and this ultimately paved the way for the Jin Dynasty to conquer them as well. It's a cautionary tale of the dangers of short-term thinking and the importance of considering the long-term consequences of our actions. Well, that's a wrap on my video about why the Northern Sun Dynasty should never have gone to war with the Liu Dynasty. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Now, before I go, I want to hear from you. Do you agree with my thoughts on the matter? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Your support means everything to me and it's what keeps me motivated to keep creating content. And hey, if there's a particular topic you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know. I'm always on the lookout for new ideas and I would love to hear your suggestions. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.